NASA is attempting to unlock the secrets of deep sea areas like the Mariana Trench to help it prepare to explore space. Here are the underwater details. NASA is using deep sea exploration on Earth as a means to look for clues of what oceans on other planets could look like and an extreme testing ground for its technology, according to the BBC. The deepest parts of Earth's oceans, known as the Haddle Zone, are made up of trenches and troughs up to 11 kilometers below the surface of the planet's oceans. And as part of its interest in this area, NASA is currently helping build a new autonomous underwater vehicle called Orpheus to help further map the more inaccessible parts and act as a gateway vehicle for further exploration. In a sign of the back-and-forth relationship between deep sea and space exploration, Orpheus, which follows on from an unsuccessful attempt to do the same thing in 2014, will use similar visual navigation technology to NASA's Perseverance Mars rover to identify rock formations, shells, and other features on the ocean floor, and create three-dimensional maps of key features that have not previously been mapped. In looking in this direction, one specific part of the wider intrigue for NASA lies in looking at organisms capable of surviving in such extreme conditions. Until 1977, it was believed that all living organisms were ultimately sustained by a food chain fueled by photosynthesis. Plants, algae, and some marine bacteria close to the surface converting the sun's energy into sugars, which they store in their organic matter. This is then eaten by herbivores, which in turn are eaten by carnivorous animals. And scientists previously believed tiny organisms on the ocean floor survived by consuming the carcasses of animals, feces, and other organic matter that drift down from above, but did not believe sea creatures could exist so far down. However, in 1977, a remotely operated vehicle dropped 2,440 meters into the Pacific Ocean, discovered vibrant ecosystems, including translucent snailfish and amphipods, and tiny flea-like crustaceans, around hydrothermal vents, living off chemicals coming out of the sea floor. This constituted a whole new way of living on Earth, according to deep-sea biologist Tim Shank, and with vast oceans also being found on other ocean worlds, such as the 40 to 100 mile deep saltwater ocean that is thought to be below the icy surface of Jupiter's moon Europa. Discoveries like these allow scientists to both answer and ask questions about where life might be found outside of Earth. From a more practical perspective, too, the technical challenges around exploring hydrothermal vents on Earth are believed to be similar enough to those on worlds such as Europa or Saturn's moon Enceladus to provide a useful testing ground for equipment. You have to look very closely for a temperature change in the water coming up through the ground and interacting with very cold seawater, according to Darlene Lim, a NASA geobiologist who is leading NASA's subsea program in preparing astronauts for exploration of the moon and deep space. Even that act alone is very valuable for how we might anticipate having to do exploration on some of these ocean worlds in our solar system, Lim told the BBC. Though no below-surface missions in Enceladus and Europa are currently in the works, technical lessons from the subsea program are set to be used directly in the 2023 Viper mission to look for water ice on the moon's south pole. And then finally, there are the communications lessons. Though Kathy Sullivan, the first American woman to walk in space, did dive into the deepest point of the Mariana Trench, the deepest known spot on Earth in 2020, most deep-sea exploration is directed remotely, using robots, and the rapid decision-making required, alongside use of limited communication channels, has been used to mimic conditions within space missions. NASA's LIM sums up the close relationship between the two types of exploration like this, Everything we learned by working together with the oceanographic community has been completely invaluable, really priceless, in helping us have confidence in the process that we're using to design our science operations for Viper. Of course, it's not all about space. Deep sea exploration is also an ends in and of itself. According to the BBC, NASA says its oceanographic explorations have brought out thousands of scientific discoveries and they're also providing information that could be vital if we hope to continue living on a world with healthy oceans. The New York Times reports undersea explorer Victor Vescovo and Kathy Sullivan, the first American woman to walk in space, dived into the Challenger Deep last Sunday. The Challenger Deep is the deepest known spot on Earth. It is roughly 10,902 to 10,929 meters deep. Sullivan and Vescovo captured images of the deep sea while aboard the Limiting Factor, a deep sea research submersible that can withstand 2,200 tons of pressure. It is designed to travel into the deep oceanic trenches of the ocean called the Haddle Zone. Once the pair ascended back into their ship, they called a group of astronauts in the International Space Station, 
which at the time was located around 409 kilometers above Earth. A deep sea gold rush led by China could soon have catastrophic consequences for marine ecosystems, according to the Hong Kong Free Press. When shifting tectonic plates create hydrothermal vents at the bottom of the ocean, these vents interact with seawater to create polymetallic nodules, polymetallic sulfides, and ferromanganese crusts rich in valuable minerals such as cobalt and nickel, which are used in many forms of green technology and mobile phones. However, mining is seen as a major risk to the countless unknown species that live in these areas. And in June, more than 350 scientists signed a petition calling for a moratorium until robust scientific information has been obtained. This came in response to the Pacific Island nation of Nauru activating a legal trigger to allow a Canadian company to start mining in two years' time, even if a key mining code of practice developed by the UN is not in place by then. And that is where China comes in. Critics argue the precedent could cause a Wild West-style gold rush, and the Hong Kong Free Press reports that the China is best placed to take advantage of one for three reasons: first, because it is the first country in the world to sponsor and maintain contracts for exploring all three types of mineral resources in the international seabed area; second, because of the 30 contracts the UN's International Seabed Authority has so far issued to explore the seabed, Chinese companies hold five more than anyone else. And finally, because of the nation's powerful position in relation to that international seabed authority, where the U.S. is not represented because it has not ratified the Law of the Sea Convention, the Chinese government live-streamed footage of its new manned submersible as it reached the bottom of the Mariana Trench on Friday. The Fendouzhe, meaning striver, submersible descended more than 10 kilometers into the submarine trench in the Western Pacific Ocean with three researchers on board, stated by state broadcaster CCTV. Only a handful of people have ever visited the bottom of the Mariana Trench, a 2,550-kilometer-long depression in the Earth's crust that is deeper than Mount Everest is high. The first explorers visited the trench in 1960 on a brief expedition, after which there have been no missions until movie director James Cameron made the first solo trip to the bottom in 2012. Cameron described a desolate and alien environment. Fen Douzhe had earlier this month set a Chinese record of 10,909 meters for manned deep sea diving after landing in the deepest known point of the trench, Challenger Deep, just shy of the 10,927 meter world record set by an American explorer in 2019. According to a new study in the journal Nature, seismic activity around the Mariana Trench have revealed the Earth around it could be taking in at least 4.3 times more water than previously thought. The researchers deployed 19 seismographs to the bottom of the ocean around the trench and seven land-based seismographs on the Mariana Islands. Two tectonic plates meet at the Mariana Trench, which is where the huge Pacific plate seems to be sliding under the tiny Mariana plate, thus letting vast amounts of seawater to pour through the cracks into the Earth's crust 30 kilometers below the surface. The researchers believe that the seawater could turn into hydrous minerals due to the high temperature and pressure. The hydrous minerals would then be incorporated into the lower plate and sink deeper into the mantle as the tectonic plate sinks. The BBC reports that the first task of NASA's Perseverance rover on Mars is to send back data so technicians can check to see if any systems were damaged during its rough journey. After that, the rover's mast must be raised. Then, the software that got the vehicle to Mars must be exchanged for software that enables the robot to drive across its surface. Perseverance's next step would be to take many pictures over the next week as scientists seek to assess the nature of the nearby terrain. One near-term objective will be to run a helicopter experiment. Perseverance carried with it a mini chopper that will attempt to make the first powered flight in another world. Only after this will the robot get on with the serious business of its mission. It will head to the vast delta feature that scientists want to analyze. Deltas are built by rivers as they push out into a wider body of water and dump their sediment. Scientists are hoping that trapped in the material that built this delta are the telltale signatures of past biology. The rover will sample the sediment and test it for signs of alien life. For more news animations and explainers, hit the subscribe and bell button to join the Tomo News family. Thanks for watching.